Good evening everyone, Margo from the Prior Homestead, bringing you today a little bit of Scripture Sunday. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about doubts and how our lives are affected, how our dreams and our futures and our realities are affected by the doubts that we carry with us each and every day. And those doubts aren't just our own doubts, but they're the doubts in our own faith. They're the doubts in our own belief. They're the doubts in our own, the humanitarian system. The doubts in people in general. <clears throat> Some things I'd like you to think about when I start reading scripture is about what can you do to help keep your thoughts and beliefs on your dreams and to continue bringing those dreams to life. What can be done to help strengthen you, strengthen your determination, and help you with continuing to have and keep your connection with God Himself? Jesus, they, He gave Himself to for us for our sins so that we could have faith in him the ultimate faith he gave the ultimate his life so we would give the ultimate our faith that's the least we can do is give complete 100 percent faith to him but yet we doubt ourselves <clears throat> we doubt ourselves we doubt our families we doubt our friends we doubt everything in our lives, including God. We wonder how our dreams can come true when He's already seen our dreams. He's already seen the full extent of our lives. He's seen it. He's created it. He knows what's in store for us. When we start thinking that something bad might happen in our lives, we have to stop ourselves. We have to stop ourselves and start saying, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What is this talk? This negative talk? This negativity? This is not God talking to me. Would I talk to God like this? I'm talking down about my life? And would I talk down to Him about my life? And say, would well, you give me a verbal one? You just you give me this horrible place to live and these horrible friends. When we turn to him and say things like that, in return he might be saying, I give you free will. I'm showing you your job's true colors, your friends' true colors, your life's calling that you believe is supposed to be which is not the plan that I have for you. <clears throat> I'm showing the true colors. I'm pushing you. Literally shoving you <laughs> into the right direction. Some of us, it takes a real big shove. An example for us is we bought some property. We thought it was going to be our dream property. Beautiful piece of land. Took a lot of work to get it fixed. We had to do husband had to take the tractor and we had to cut the grass on it with the zero turn multiple times. We had to have crews of people going in there. We paid them to come in, cut the grass, cut down trees, cut down brush. But the view, the view was gorgeous. We built a whole house from a garage. Thinking this was our plan. I had that nagging feeling the whole time in my stomach, but this just didn't feel like home yet. I just didn't feel comfortable there, and I didn't know why. We started to work on more of the property, and before we started getting into the finalization of it, we had a huge stop. I can't get into the about it, but needless to say, not all people are nice, not all people are very kind, people that want to get their way sometimes will go above and beyond reproach of their own 
himself in their own soul. I forgive them for what they did to, to us and towards us. Because when we sat back and thought about it, talked about it, obviously, it was God's way. He put his hand up and was, stop! Stop right there and then, you know, put a halt to everything. This was my dream. Greenhouse and place for the hogs and the place for all the chickens and the ducks and it all came to a screeching halt and worse we're currently looking to sell find another place just because God put his hand up and said no this is not for you this is not your story as much as we wanted it to be we liked it to be we worked hard to make it our story in our life he put a stop up that <laughs> it, it would have put an elephant down it our life just came to a complete utter wreck and standstill <clears throat> God has a way he has our backs he knows our lives and our dreams and he knows our hearts and our souls and he knows the people that have his back that believe in him that come to him and turn to him and believe me I'm guilty just like anybody else I am guilty I am a sinner straight up and down if you say you're not a sinner I will call you a bare faced liar why because we all sin there is all times when we look at somebody and go We don't have the right to judge, but we do all the time. We don't have the right to make the decisions on God's behalf on what our life should be. And we really shouldn't fight Him to make our dreams come true. We should follow the path that He tries to take us. It's not always clear. That means we're not close enough to him we're not listening we're not doing what we should to follow his word and to hear his heart his words we're not quiet enough in our own self there are too many fake people bullies liars in this world and God gave all of us free will to live and talk and say how we choose. It's up to us to believe in Him enough to know that God has our backs. God knows our future and He has our backs. In Genesis 50, 21, He says, Now therefore ye not, I will nourish you and let and your little ones and he comforted them and spake kindly unto them fear not he has our backs he has our backs he's gonna make sure that we're okay our families are okay he will talk to us he will feed us he will make sure that we're okay but we have to make sure he's okay also in our hearts and in our souls we have to make sure that we completely open 100% for him if we're not 100 him he's still there for us but he also lets us stumble and fall we're mankind we're his creation but we're also sinners and we also had the free will to make those mistakes and he's not gonna stop us but he will help us and he will give us everything that we need as long as we stay in his faith we stay in his good graces in Psalms 
94 verses 16 through 19 he says who will rise up for me against the evildoers or who will stand up for me against the workers of inequity unless the Lord had been my help my soul had almost dwelt in silence I apologize I Sometimes I can't read my own writing. Let me read that again. Unless the Lord had been my help, unless he'd been help for the person that is Jehovah asking, unless God had been on his side, his soul would have been in silence. No words would have been spoken. Nothing would have happened if the Lord hadn't been on his side. And if he didn't turn to the Lord also. In eight, verse 18, it says, When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. When he slipped, God was right there to help catch him. And to make sure his dreams continued to stay true in his strength and his his belief in himself and in, it, in God and his family and humanity he held him up in verse 19 in the multitude of my thoughts within me thy comforts delight my soul we all have all these thoughts in our minds all the time and a lot of times our minds will run a, a million miles an hour day and night we're constantly worrying about things that we can't do anything about I'm guilty I'm guilty <laughs> but when we lean on him when we hear his voice and his words his words comfort us because that's what he's here for. That's what he wants to do for us. He wants to comfort us. He's not here to give us a hard time in life. That's mankind. That's the devil. And the devil comes right up in and says, You know what? I'm going to make life fun for you. And you know why? Because I know that you enjoy the bad things in life the the things that you know you shouldn't be doing that will bring you away from his good graces you know we are all sinners and the devil will do whatever it takes to pull us away from God and his good graces but it just takes one word one phrase let me say forgive me Lord of all my sins my heart is yours my soul I'm leaving it all on the table for you if you say this for him if you put everything out from your heart and your soul to him bury your heart and soul and say God this is my life. I know you see it. I know you can read it. I know you've watched my life fall apart. And I know I'm a big part of the reason why it fell apart. I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that. Did I ever ask you? Did I ask you? Did you want me to do this or to go in this direction? More likely not. I know I, I'm very well guilty, like so many of us all, but he wants our dreams to come true. He's already got this amazing life for us all if we would just see it and be open to what he has to say. If we listen to him and we stay close to him, when doubt fills our minds and our heart is in turmoil, 
He eases our souls. He renews our hope. Just by letting Him know we're here. If you just let everything go and let Him have it, things may not be different tomorrow morning when you wake up or t tonight, but things will be better. Things will be different. And He will make sure that your life and how things go for you, your dreams, the what should happen for you, will happen if you trust and believe in Him. <clears throat> you have to turn to Him when you start becoming filled with that. And you need to ask God to lead you in His ways and to allow you to see His righteous path. See His path. See His path for you. I want to see the path that He has for me. So I pray. I pray for family. I pray for friends. I pray for everyone. I pray that God will give me the strength to do these YouTube videos. To share with you all. He gives me the strength to go to get up and do it. It might not be in my time, but it is in this. Now I'm going to give a couple more uh, books and chapters for you to read for yourself that go over more about dreams and how that make our dreams, help our dreams come true, um, how more to believe in Him and to get our strength from Him. Just to have a little bit of extra reading for yourself if you want to do some for yourself. Uh, if not, I might read it sometime later at a different time. Um, we have St. John, chapters 14, 15, and 16. Psalms, chapters 30, 31, and 32. And Proverbs, chapter 3. There are different chapters that I have went over and found that uh, they give a lot of strength and belief when it comes to doubt in ourselves and our lives and our days. Make sure whenever you start your day, think, start out thinking, what can you learn today? What can you do today that you did not do yesterday? It might be something really simple, really small. And then again, it might be something really big. It could be something as little as smiling at somebody that's having a bad day, or as big as changing where you live. Think about, pray about it, and think seriously about what you can learn today that you did not know yesterday. See the direction that God wants you to go to. God wants you to have a good life. He wants you to live an abundant life. Our lives are not ours. They're just borrowed. We live, we're living on borrowed time. You know, he he lets, lets us live in these bodies to experience life, to experience His love in human form, just like Adam and Eve did. I hope you enjoyed my uh, scripture today. Um, I, I hope that you all don't give up on your dreams. Uh, it, it's really hard not to get discouraged. Whether you're in school and you have kids that pick on you at school or you go to work and you just dislike your job or your stay-at-home grandparent and find that life has become tediously boring. God is there 
doubters and we will see so much more beauty and greatness and so much more about life if we turn to him and pray and say, God, my life is yours. My life, my soul, I'm turning it all over to you because you're the one that can help make my dreams come true. You've already written the story of my life. Show me the way. And he will do whatever it takes if we do whatever it takes. It has to be a win-win situation. He wants us to reach to him for him to give us the glory. And that's what he wants us to have is glory in heaven with him by his side. But we have to learn how to be glorious people. And it's all baby steps. Now, on a side note, I like to say that my husband and I, we've decided that we are going to, we're going to be celebrating our 33 and 33rd, sorry, anniversary in August. Um, we still love, love each other very, very much. Um, we are still. A, a bit camera shy <laughs> but he wants us to share what he calls our call it our special time as in once a month for either one day or a couple days we're going to show our appreciation for the other. And I'm, I'm going to take some time and plan something out. He will do the same. And then we'll let y'all know how things went. You know, we might, might be something as simple as he takes me to yard sales or I just let him sleep all weekend. You know, it's, It's to show how much we appreciate each other, to do things for each other, because he does so much for me, and I am a stay-at-home grandma, and I do everything here for him and for the rest of the family when they need me. And we're going to take some time out. We're going to unplug on those days. We might take some pictures or videos after. And we'll let you know how things go on our appreciation days. Because it's really important to show your loved one how much you love and appreciate them. It's, it's not about the intimacies of a relationship. It's about creating intimacy, creating a lasting relationship with, and being with somebody that you want to be with, that you want to do things with, that you want to spend time with. <clears throat> it, it's all about loving each other unconditionally. And I love him unconditionally. And... I believe he loves me unconditionally. And so we're going to have appreciation days. Now, if we do start having videos and we have little short bits and anybody else wants to join in, you more the merrier because it's always an amazing, great thing to share the happiness of appreciation when you, a spouse shows appreciation. You know, it, it, we're not talking about showing anything. This is PG, everybody. <laughs> PG. <laughs> but if you take your spouse out for a really romantic dinner and then you take them to the drive in movies, the theater, or you take them uh, yard selling all weekend, or you take them out of town, or you plan on locking the doors, cutting your phones off, 
and having pizza and movies and sleeping all weekend, not answering the phones, not looking online for anything but good movies to watch, to just bond. Why not celebrate what you're doing for each other? Shout it from the rooftops. I had a great weekend or a great week or a great night with my spouse. And no, get your minds out of the gutter because it ain't nothing like that. We use PG. <laughs> but show your love. You know, show your appreciation for one another because it's important. It's important to remember and to remind those that are with us and that are around us and that we want to spend the rest of our lives with how important they are to us. He's everything for me. He's my protector. He's my soulmate. He's everything. And God brought him to me, to my life. I honest to God believe that. That God brought him to my life. And from the moment I put my eyes on him, I knew I was going to marry him. I knew that we were meant to be together. And... No, it hasn't always been easy. But we want everybody to know we love each other and we're going to have appreciation spouse days or weekends or weeks. We're going to share it with y'all and we would love it if y'all decide to share with us. Appreciate your spouse days. Think about it. Well, that's all for now, y'all. We hope that y'all have a great memorial weekend. Much love and appreciation to all our fallen heroes, all those who are not at home with their family and loved ones, all those who have put their lives on the line or continue to do so. Our hearts and souls are with you all the time. You are true heroes in our eyes. Thank you all. And thank you all for coming to watch my video. Leave a comment. Don't forget, if you're a new subscriber, click the subscribe and ring the bell so you'll know every time that we upload videos. Not sure if we're going to get one for this Monday, but we'll try. We'll see how things go. Uh, especially with the holidays, we might... Uh, shut off for the next 24 hours who knows um much love from all of us from our home to y'all's until next time bye y'all